What do you think of when you hear the word tech or the tech industry? I'm willing to bet most of you would say things like software engineers, coding, computers, phones, hefty paychecks, or one of the big tech companies in Silicon Valley. Now, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear mechanical engineers? Probably tools, well-oiled machines, engines, cars, Tony Stark, and not the tech industry. There seems to be a common misconception that mechanical engineers can't get into tech and that you need to know how to program and write complex algorithms to do so. But luckily, this is completely false and there are plenty of awesome opportunities for mechanical engineers in the technology industry. Having worked on smartphones myself as a mechanical engineer in Silicon Valley, in this video, I'll help you decide if getting into tech is right for you and I'll give you an effective plan for breaking into this exciting, diverse, and lucrative industry. I've noticed a lot of people having a skewed perception of the technology industry. So to start, we'll first take a deep dive into what the technology industry actually encompasses so you can accurately decide if you want to get into tech. Companies like Apple, Google, Meta, Amazon, and Microsoft and their products are the face of the tech industry. However, there's so much more than meets the eye. If you think that getting into tech is exceptionally challenging, it's probably because your understanding of tech is very limited and you think that the tech industry is only comprised of these big tech giants. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not the case and there are hundreds of thousands of other companies in the world of tech. The tech industry is incredibly broad and can be broken down into three key subsectors. Technology, hardware, and equipment, semiconductor and semiconductor equipment, and software and services. For mechanical engineers, we want to focus on the first two. The first and more popular subsector is, of course, technology, hardware, and equipment, which consists of companies that design, manufacture, and market hardware products to meet the evolving needs of consumers and businesses worldwide. If you look around, you'll find a plethora of these products, including this iPhone, this Switch console, this Bose speaker, this Canon camera, and this Microsoft laptop. Some less obvious examples are an NVIDIA, DGX AI supercomputer, or Bosch electronic control unit, or ECU, found in an electric car that controls and regulates all of the parameters related to the motors, transmission, ADAS system, and HVAC. Even the navigation and flight management systems on an Airbus commercial aircraft that assist pilots in safely planning a flight in adverse weather conditions count as tech equipment. As a mechanical engineer, you of course have the option to work on these cool products and at these companies. But did you know that without semiconductors and semiconductor equipment, which is the second core subsector of the tech industry, none of the cutting edge and awesome products that we just mentioned would exist? An essential part of modern tech products, whether it's your smartphone, laptop, or a car, is integrated circuits or or IC for short. They are more commonly referred to as chips. And no, not these kind of chips. Chips are the brains behind all modern electronic devices, enabling them to perform complex calculations, process data, and execute instructions. There are over 500,000 tech companies in the United States alone that design and build tech products. But did you know that there are only roughly half a dozen companies in the world that have the capability to manufacture the chips in these products? I'm willing to bet that you've heard of some of them. TSMC, Intel, and Samsung are three notable chip manufacturers that supply over 70% of the world's chips. To make these game-changing chips, companies like TSMC and Intel need to use a range of tools, including cutting-edge wafer processing equipment from ASM, who are very kindly sponsoring this part of the video. ASM is a company at the forefront of innovation, leading the way in semiconductor equipment manufacturing solutions. 
applications. ASM designs and makes the world's most advanced deposition equipment used to build smaller, faster, and more powerful chips needed to make the electronic products that we use in our daily lives, like this smartphone or camera. ASM works closely with the world's largest chip manufacturers and supplies them with advanced technologies that shape the future of technology. At the core of ASM's wide range of deposition tools is their atomic layer deposition machines. Atomic layer deposition enables the creation of ultra thin films of exceptional material quality, uniformity, and conformity one atomic layer at a time. ASM also offers epitaxy tools that can deliver highly controlled silicon based crystalline layers for highly complex microprocessors and memory devices used in smartphones and electric vehicles. In addition to these cutting edge solutions, ASM offers plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition equipment and vertical furnaces for further chip applications. ASM is more than just technology. At ASM is a diverse team of passionate and brilliant individuals driven by a shared purpose of improving people's lives through advancing technology, a team that strives to push boundaries and empower global advancements in AI, tech, electric vehicles, and more. If you're an engineering student or an engineer, or you're just interested in semiconductors and tech and would like to make a meaningful impact on the world around us, be sure to check out ASM's website and career opportunities via the link in the description below. So you might be wondering what these chips actually look like. Well, they are tiny silicon wafers containing intricate arrangements of transistors, resistors, and capacitors, which are like the cells in the human body. The first integrated circuit was developed by Jack Kilby at Texas Instruments in 1958, measuring 7 16 of an inch by 1 16 of an inch. However, chips found in our smartphones or laptops are a lot smaller, around the size of our fingernail that can hold exponentially more transistors compared to 70 years ago. You can think of a transistor like a water valve used to control the flow of current and amplify signals. Moore's law, which you probably already know, predicts that the number of transistors on a chip approximately doubles every two years. More transistors packed into the same area means more computing power, efficiency, functionality, and allows for a sleeker and more compact form factor in tech products. Small Smaller chips also consume less power, which is important for smartphones and tablets where battery life is a critical factor for the user experience. Now today's chips can hold around 50 billion transistors, but that number is increasing rapidly every year with advancements in chip manufacturing, which comes with a lot of physics and cost related challenges. Just to give you some perspective, an Apple A16 Bionic chip used in the iPhone 15 contains 16 billion transistors. The D1 chip used in Tesla's supercomputer Dojo to train Tesla's machine learning models to improve its full self-driving ADAS system contains 50 billion transistors and Nvidia's new Blackwell B200 GPU chip has a mind-boggling 208 billion transistors. Now, just like the chips we eat, there are several flavors and categories of chips found in electronics. The first is logic chips, which are the brains of electronic devices used to process information to complete a task. Central processing units, graphical processing units, and neural processing units are all examples of logic chips. Then there's memory chips that store information like DRAM, which saves data only when a device is on and NAND for storing files and data when the device is powered off. The third is ASICs, which is a simpler chip that serves a specific purpose, such as performing a repetitive task like scanning a barcode. The last category is SOCs or chips that integrate many elements on a single chip, such as Wi-Fi, camera, video, and graphics. Unlike the hundreds of thousands of tech companies in the world that design and build tech equipment, and hardware, there are only roughly half a dozen of these companies that can manufacture various flavors of these chips, the most notable being Intel, Samsung, and TSMC. Now you might be thinking, well, doesn't Apple and Nvidia also make chips? Well, not 
really because they only design their own chips. To make these chips, they have to outsource them to one of the very few chip manufacturers in the world like TSMC. Up to this point, we've talked about chips and how none of the tech products you and I have come to love would be here without chips. But this isn't entirely accurate because the machines and equipment designed by mechanical engineers that are used to make chips are actually the unsung heroes, the cornerstone, and the backbone of the entire tech industry. Without them, there are no chips and consequently no tech products, modern day electronics, or AI. So how exactly are chips made with these revolutionary machines. There are hundreds of steps used in chip fabrication, which can take up to a year from design to mass production. In the chip manufacturing plants, or more commonly known as fabs, various types of wafer processing equipment fill the clean rooms where the air quality and temperature are strictly controlled to eliminate contamination. Chips start out as a round silicon wafer, typically 300 millimeters in diameter. Hundreds or even even up to a thousand chips are processed at the same time on each wafer. The key process steps of chip fabrication are deposition, lithography, etching, deposition, and planarization. Deposition is the first and arguably the most important step in chip making, where thin films of various materials are deposited onto the wafer that will form the wiring, transistors, and other components. Now that we've established what the technology industry actually is, I'll share with you a strategy and some tips on how you can get into tech. This strategy is more geared towards mechanical engineering students, but is still relevant if you're a mechanical engineer working in a different industry. Whether your goal is to design and build tech products or the machines that make the chips driving these products and develop next generation chip fabrication processes that you need to get an internship in university. Ideally, your internship should be related to the technology industry so you can gain relevant experience and more easily get your foot in the door once you start job hunting. Now, by no means am I saying that you should limit yourself and not apply to internships in other industries because you absolutely absolutely should as a safety net. To give an example, if your long-term goal is to work at one of the big tech companies like Apple or Google, try to find an internship at a company that manufactures consumer electronics. It can be a startup, a mid-sized corporation, or even better, it can be at Apple, Google, or one of their suppliers. If you wanted to work on semiconductors, get an internship at a company that either designs chips, makes chips, or designs a machine that make the chips. This should entirely be based on your own interests. Nvidia and AMD are companies that design chips, Intel and TSMC make chips, and ASM designs and build the machines that make these chips. All of these companies have mechanical engineering internships and full-time positions, so you just need to apply directly on their website or through LinkedIn. Now let's say you can't get an internship in the technology industry for whatever reason maybe because of your location or you got rejected. That's perfectly fine so long as you can get an internship and develop the core skills needed to succeed as a mechanical engineer. That includes skills like computer-aided design, design for manufacture and assembly, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, and just understanding how business and operations are conducted in industry. The point of getting an internship is to learn as much as you can, network, and leverage it to land a full-time job after graduating. I've made several videos in the past explaining how to develop these skills, land internships, and prepare for interviews. So if you're interested, I'll include the links in the video description below and at the end of this video. Now to summarize, the technology industry isn't only about software engineers and big tech companies. Mechanical engineers have and will continue to lead and play a huge role in the tech industry. It's arguably one of the most versatile and impactful industries in the world and encompassing everything we have come to love, including smartphones, cars, biotechnology, and most recently, chat GPT. What's more important and that more engineers need to know is that the core of the technology industry isn't these products. It's the integrated circuits or chips and the machines that make these chips. 
They are the building blocks and the key driving force behind electronics, AI, and technology in general. Without enough chip manufacturer equipment that companies like ASM supply to chip manufacturers, products like cars, smartphones, laptops, and video game consoles can't be built as evidenced by the global chip shortage during the pandemic from 2020 to 2023. Just to give you guys some shocking numbers, Toyota cut vehicle production by 40%. General Motors stopped production of virtually all of its cars at its North American plants, and Nintendo made 20% fewer Switch consoles. The prices of some of these products were marked up to 300% above their retail price. And the reason is simple, a shortage of chips. So I'll end by saying that the world definitely needs more engineers to understand and address these interesting challenges facing the tech industry to meet the demands of consumers, businesses, and society as a whole. If you still want to get into the tech industry after watching this video, I promise you that it will be one of the best decisions you've ever made because the possibilities are endless. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and and if you found this video helpful, be sure to smash the subscribe button and check out my playlist here where I talk about how to build skills, ace interviews, and land internships. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.